everybody, it's Kathleen from the Children's Library here with another story time from my home. Today we're going to talk all about seeds. I was looking in my garden and I noticed that all the flowers and some of the vegetables are starting to form seeds and I thought, wow, it'd be a great idea to share that with the kids. So we're going to do some books and then I'm going to take you out to my garden and show you some of the seeds. Um, that I have growing in my yard and all the different shapes and sizes and colors and textures of seeds will just amaze you. So my first book today is called Seeds Sprout. Now, have you ever seen a seed? This kind of reminds me of a sunflower seed. I can't tell what quite that is, but we'll find out some more about seeds sprouting. Now, seeds are amazing things. They have everything they need inside that tiny little thing. And they just need water, and sun and some soil, and then they grow. It's amazing, it really is amazing. Wow, are those seeds? Did I get the right book? I did. Does anybody know what those are? Coconuts. Coconuts are the world's largest seeds. Seeds big and small. Most plants make seeds. Some plants make big seeds, some make tiny seeds. The largest seed in the world is the sea coconut. The seed weighs as much as a small child. Indian paintbrush flower seeds are as tiny as the tip of a sharp pencil. Look at those. What's inside a seed? Well, seeds are one way a plant makes more plants. Each seed has a baby plant inside it. It also has the food the baby plant needs to start growing. What's a fruit? Fruits have seeds, don't they? Look right there. A fruit is the part of a plant that holds the seeds. You know fruits such as peaches and apples, but beans, tomatoes, and cucumbers are actually fruits too. The fruit carries the seed to their new home. Fruits help spread seeds from one place to another. Now, how would a fruit help a seed travel? Think about that. I thought about when I see an apple tree and there's apples on the ground rotting, they have seeds in there. How do seeds travel? Wind, oh, you've seen these. Wind can blow seeds in the air. Some seeds travel by sticking to socks or animal fur. If the fruit floats, water can carry the seeds far away. Animals eat fruit and then leave the seeds behind in their droppings. I've seen bear scat before with lots of seeds from, from the ash trees. How many seeds do fruits have? A peach has only one seed inside. What's that called? Some people call that a pit. Pea pods have a few seeds inside. Look at all these. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's just my phone, sorry. Some fruits have many seeds. Look at these. Do you know what that might be from? It looks like a honeydew melon to me. Yes, it says melon seeds. Some fruits have many seeds. Melons have too many seeds to count easily. That would be hard to count. We could make an estimate. I'm going to estimate. What do you think? I'm going to estimate there's about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So if that's about 30, that's about, let's maybe say 60 and double it. I'm going to guess 120. 120 is my estimate. I wonder what your estimate will be. Can you make an estimate? An estimate is when we take a quick guess. We don't count. I bet you can estimate real quick. How many melons? Really quick. Did you catch about maybe five? You do it really fast, really fast. Estimate, don't count. So there's four. I think there's four, yep, four melons. So when you saw that really fast, you might have said, oh, maybe there's three, maybe there's five. Look at this. This says, acorns hold the seeds of an oak tree. There's the seeds. What is a seed coat? Seeds wear coats. A seed has a cover called a seed coat. The seed coat protects the baby plant. Tomato seeds have a soft coat. Oak tree seeds have a hard coat, just like that. Have you ever had a tomato seed? It's kind of soft and mushy. This, you probably couldn't even open with your hands. It has such a thick coat. How does a seed sprout? 
The new plant cannot grow inside the seed coat. It must wait for the seed coat to open. Water can soften the seed coat. The soft seed coat splits. Then the new plant starts growing. You can see the coat here, it's that brown color. It's splitting and then out comes, this looks like a bean. Now this is under the soil. Somehow they might have done this against a piece of glass so we can see what's going on. So you plant the seed, it's got that little crack. There the seed coat's opening, it's sprouting, it's sending down roots, which are like straws that suck up water and nutrients from the soil. And pretty soon what's gonna happen? Boop, it's gonna pop right out, like this. Pops right out. So you would know what that is? That's a sunflower seed or a sunflower plant. Do seeds make new plants? Each seed can make a new plant. The new plant grows and grows and grows. Someday it'll look like the plant from which the seed came. Then the plant will make more seeds that grow into new plants. And you see all the seeds in that sunflower? The birds like to eat those. I think that's all we're gonna read out of this book. And I have to thank our publisher. Who is our publisher of this wonderful book? We always wanna thank whoever made this book. And I don't see a publisher, so I apologize. Hmm, we don't have a publisher. Okay, we'll just cut that out. Our next book is just called Seeds, S. E E D S seeds. We can already see this plant. That's where the middle and that's where the beautiful flower petals were. And then they're, they're like a little parachute. There's the seed and the wind can take it far away so it can spread all over. Plants wanna spread and take over the world. That's what their job is in their minds. Oh, look at these beautiful illustrations. So I forgot to mention, this is from Carm Lemonscats. Wow, that's a neat last name. And Candlewick Studios is the publisher. Thank you for letting me read this aloud. I really love these illustrations. The illustrations or the pictures are just vibrant and colorful. Look at these sunflower seeds. Seeds carry the power So they embark on amazing adventures. Some take off to distant lands. Here they go, parachuting about. Others wait to be carried away to their destiny. Now what are these ants doing with these seeds? Can you see their underground chambers? They're taking them down. Looks like they've got lots of peas down here. Why do you think they're saving those seeds underground? I think you're right, saving them for winter maybe? Once seeds find their place, they go through breathtaking transformations. So like we saw earlier, they start like this. There's that seed coat breaking and the roots are going down and it's coming up above the ground. <gasps> Look at that, that looks like a squash plant. Maybe it's a tomato or a, a, a pumpkin. Or maybe it's a zucchini plant. Let's find out. Oh, can you guess? It's a pumpkin plant. That's great. Seeds have the power to multiply in numbers. One pumpkin seed can bring dozens of pumpkins. And each pumpkin brings hundreds of seeds. If you carve pumpkins, Make sure you look how many seeds are in there. Seeds have the power to multiply in size. The tiniest seed in the world sprouts a beautiful orchid. Seeds have the power to grow in difficult places. They can thrive despite all odds. Right out of a cement wall, we when we sow a seed, we take part in this amazing cycle. Sowing a seed is planting. Right there, she's sowing a seed. And we can plant many different kinds of seeds. A smile 
Here's a powerful seed. Ooh, thinking about a smile as a seed. If you smile, it grows a friendship, right? Oh, one that can bring joy and friendship. But there are also seeds that bring anger and misunderstanding. When those seeds grow, it tears us apart. Mm, we all have times like that, don't we? Seeds can only bring what they carry. Pumpkin seeds bring pumpkins. Kindness seeds bring kindness. I wonder what she might do to help that situation. What do you think? Go check on her friend, maybe? You have lots of seeds, and you get to decide which ones to plant and which ones to grow. You can choose to grow real seeds and also seeds of friendship. Seeds have whole worlds inside them, just like you. Mm -hmm. Look at this funny picture at the end. Mm, I like that book, Seeds. Hmm. I want to go back and look real quick at these beautiful illustrations. Aren't, isn't that just gorgeous? And those sunflower seeds look so real. I really enjoyed that book. This will be at the library if anyone wants to come check it out. All right, I've got a little song for you guys. It goes like this. First, get out your hand. How many fingers do you have? One, two, three, four, five, five. Five little peas in a pea pod press. One grew and two grew and so did all the rest. They grew and they grew and they did not stop until one day that pea pod popped. I have to be careful not to scare my dog this time. Let's do it again, a little faster. Five little peas in a pea pod press. One grew and two grew and so did all the rest. They grew and they grew and they did not stop until one day that pea pod popped. Now I'm gonna show you what the craft is gonna be. You can come by the library anytime to pick this up. We'll have it this week and next week. And um, we're gonna make a little pea pod. So that looks like a little pea and then you open it up and inside you're gonna write your name. So this is, this is my next door neighbor's name, Nora, N-O-R-A. So when you come to the library, you'll get one of these to cut out and you'll get a bunch of little peas. And you can write your name on there and then glue them inside your pea pod. Kind of a fun little craft. All right, I wanted to show you something, some beans from my garden. So of course everybody, look at that smiley face, or a mustache, or a mustache like that, or a telephone. I'm getting a little goofy. Anyhow, beans. Do you think there are seeds in these beans? Well, I've got some that are a little bit drier. So what happens is when that bean this is getting a little dry, but we eat them when they're nice and green. And if they stay on the plant and get drier and drier, they start to shrivel up like this. Can you see anything in there? I think I can kind of see some little dots. Those might be the seeds. But they sit and they dry out, and then guess what happens? Just like in the song, it pops open. This is a bean. It pops open, and the seeds spray out. Oh my goodness, let's see what's inside here. Oh, there goes one. That went right across my room. Look at that. There's seeds in there. If you plant, there's four. Well, there's there's three and then the one that flew across the room. If you planted this, whoops, there goes another one. Next year, it becomes a bean plant. So I saved a bunch of seeds, you see, a bunch of beans, and I'm gonna plant these next year kind of a neat way to do it. You don't have to go buy them. All right, I've got one more book for us. This is called Seeds Move. And I saved the best for last. This is by Robin Page. And let's take a quick peek at who? Beach Lane Books. Thank you, Beach Lane Books, publisher, for letting us read Seeds Move. Now, we've learned a little bit about seeds and how they move and why it's important that they move so they can spread and grow. What do you think when they talk about seeds moving, we're gonna learn about in this book? I see a bug. I see, this looks like a cactus shooting. I see a raccoon. 
Oh, look, he's got burrs on his tail. Those are seeds. I see this interesting seed and a bird with a seed. There's so many ways that seeds move. This is such a neat book. Let's read it together. A tiny seed can one day become a flower or a fruit or even a giant tree. Every seed, big or small, contains the beginnings of a new plant. But a seed needs sunlight, soil, water, and an uncrowded place to put down roots. To find all these things, a seed must move. A seed hitchhikes. Have you ever gotten most stuck on your pants when you're hiking? Those are called spiky, sticky, tight seed snag on the raccoon's tail. We have those, don't we? What? Look at this. A seed shoots. A human, touch, a human touch, a passing animal, or a gust of wind, the slightest jostle, can send exploding cucumber seeds shooting from their pods. A seed can catapult. When the right time comes, the hanging seed pods of the touch-me-not flower burst open, catapulting seeds in all directions. Sweet pea seeds do that. Oh, do you remember the biggest seed on earth? That's right, the sea coconut. A coconut, the huge seed of the palm tree, drifts on the ocean. If it's lucky, it will wash ashore and land in a perfect spot to become a new tree. Oh, here we go. Sorry about the noise. A seed burrows. Do you know what burrowing means? Go down deep. Attached, attached to the bloodroot seed is a tasty tidbit that ants love to eat. The seed sticks, the seed tricks the ants into dragging it into their underground nest. There, the ants eat the snack and then they bury their remaining seed. And what happens when you bury a seed? It grows. That's a really smart seed. A seed can roll. One kind of African grass seed looks and smells just like the droppings, poop, of an antelope. Dung beetles eat animal droppings, and these seeds fool the beetles into rolling them back to their underground homes, where the seeds can begin to grow. Oh, another tricky seed. A seed sinks. A lotus seed drops from the pod and sinks to the bottom of the pond. There it will nestle into the mud and sprout. A seed can hide. A western scrub jay collects an acorn, the seed of an oak tree, and carries it and carries it in its beak to a distant place. Oh, there's how he's hiding it. Why? Why would a bird hide a seed, I wonder? The jay bird then hides the acorn to eat later, burying it in the ground. But the jay forgets where it puts some of its acorn and those seeds may become a new oak tree. Wow, look at these seeds. Can you, whoops, uh, can you see the seeds in there? There's one dropping, Plop. Oh, who's that young fellow? A seed floats. Monkey ladder seeds drop from their huge pods, landing in the water below. The seed floats on the river, even across seas, until they take root on faraway shores. So another seed that travels in water. This is such a great picture. Look at that. A seed squirts. The durian is one of the orangutan's favorite fruits. So this is orangutan and this is a durian. But its seeds are very bitter. The orangutan eats the fruit and then squirts out the seeds. <laughs> a seed scatters. A tiny spiny mouse nibbles on the fruit of the tally weed, but the seeds of this fruit taste terrible. So the mouse spits them out, scattering them all over the ground. More spitting. A seed falls. An unlucky mouse eats a wheat seed, then gets snatched up by a hungry hawk. After the hawk eats the mouse, it coughs up a pellet that contains the mouse's fur and bones. Along with the undigested wheat seed, the pellet falls to the ground 
where the seed can sprout. So that's a complex one. Hold on, Penny. This one, okay, he, this little cute mouse ate the wheat seed. And then unfortunately, as nature happens, the mouse got eaten by the hawk, but the seed is still in there. And he coughs up this, this um, pellet and the seed's in there to land. I'm almost done. Give me a second. Well, I have to, um, can I go in the one on those house? Oh. seed parachutes. When a milkweed pod splits open, it releases hundreds of seeds. Each tiny seed is attached to the silken thread that parachute in the wind, carrying the seed away. A seed plunges. The seed pod. Mojo, that's enough. The seed pod of a red mangrove plunges into the water. The pod will drift away, then settle at the bottom of the marsh and put down roots. Mm. Oh, look at this. We know those here in Montana. That's a bear. A seed plops. Throughout the summer and fall, a hungry bear eats mountain ash berries and other fruits. As the bear wanders in search of more food, the undigested seeds plop out inside large piles of the bear's poop, also called scat. So you can start seeing these soon when you're on a trail and it looks like a big mess with a bunch of different seeds in it. You'll know when it's when you see it. Kind of fun to look for. And then a seed grows. Look at that, planting it and it grows. That's a watermelon plant. Wow, look how big that watermelon got. And then guess what's inside that watermelon? Seeds. You see them right there? And plant more watermelons. I love that seeds do that. I love that our world, we can save things and grow them up again. It's so wonderful that we can save the seeds. I'm gonna take you out in my garden and show you a few things now with seeds. All right, join me in a second. All right, so these are hollyhocks. And hollyhocks, can you find the seed on these? Oh, look, there's a little ladybug. Can you see the ladybug? There you go. Gosh, it's really hard to angle the camera. Anyhow, here are the seeds of a hollyhock. We'll, we'll collect some of those. See how they're in there. I'll show you what they look like. Here's the seeds of a hollyhock. They're individual, a whole bunch. And look at how many there are on all of these plants. There's all of these seeds. Look at all those seeds. Each, each little one of these is a seed pod. Boy, I bet you I have thousands of seeds here. Let's see what else we have in the garden for seeds. Oh, this is called salvia. And it once was purple, like this, but now that it's um, fall, it's grown, um, it's gonna be dormant soon. But here are the seeds where the flowers once were. So if I pick off some of those, let's look. Hmm. Oh, I see the seeds. They're those little black, they almost look like a poppy seed. Do you see them? The little black part right there. Oh, those are some seeds of salvia. Let's see what else. Let's take some of those in the house. Um, hmm. Let's go around here. Let's see this. These are black-eyed Susans. This will become the seed eventually, but this is not ready yet. I do have a plant over here, though. Wow, look at these seeds. Now, these are not quite ready, but just for fun... Let's open one up and see what's in there. Let's see. I'm gonna slit it open. Oh. That looks like it's gonna be... Oh, look at those seeds. Here, I'll put it on this rock. Look at inside here. Wow, see these seeds are not fully dry yet. They're still wet. We'll check back with this plant later. Look at those seed pods, really cool. 
Okay, let's go this way. Oh, I wanted to show you this plant. We can't remember what this plant is called, but you can see it has these beautiful, I think it's called a prairie cone flower. And this is how they look. They, they have this long middle part. That is what's gonna turn into the seeds for the next year's plants. So I've got a dried up one here. And let's look. Oh, oh, look at that. Can you see all those little seeds on there? Let's see what happens. Oh, what happens when we do that? Look at all those seeds. Those are tiny little seeds too. Wow. Okay, we'll take, I'm going to need a place. We'll put those on the rock. Maybe we'll examine all of our seeds, but we'll need some white. Let's see what else we have for seeds. Um, this is called Liatris, and I, I don't know that it's ready for seeds yet, but I'm guessing the seed pod is going to be in here somewhere, wouldn't you think? I think so. All right, let's go back to another area. Okay, this is called nasturtium. You can actually eat this in a salad. And this is what it looks like when it's blooming. I love these little leaves. They remind me of a, a lily pad. The seeds on this are incredibly interesting. Look at the seeds. They're big and round. I wonder if we open one up. What they look like inside. It's kind of hard to that with one hand. Oh, that's what they look like inside. Hmm. We'll add those to our collection. So that, yeah, look at those seeds. Let's see if we can see any more seeds in there. There's a lot on this one right there. Okay, we'll come back to that. All right. Now this is kind of interesting. When I lifted up this plant, Look what's underneath. Can you see all those seeds? It's reseeding itself for next year. Look at all these seeds. They're all up in there. And when I lifted this, they all went thunk, thunk, thunk. Look at all those seeds ready to grow next year. That is amazing. So I brought the seeds and flowers inside. And you remember this one's called the nasturtium. And there's this pretty flower and its leaf and then the seeds. And look what I found. I found a dried seed, let's see, versus a kind of wet seed still. Can you see the difference, the dried? Man, that's, gonna, that's a big seed. And here's what it looks like when it's on the, the um, see, it, it came from the flower. Can you see the petals? You see the flower petals there? Right, so that was the flower made the seeds. So let's look inside here. So that middle part, the stamen, that eventually turns into the seed. Look at that. Fantastic. All right, then we have the Cosmo. Remember this pretty pink flower? That's so beautiful. You can see the seeds are in there. So here's the flower when it's dried. And it, you can still see the petals, so you know it was once like this. You see the inside, you can see the seeds are starting to form in there. If I can get it open with one hand. Can you see the seeds in there? Boy, I'm making a mess. Yeah, look at their green still. Then they turn like to this. Look at all those seeds, they're flying everywhere. So the seeds for the Cosmo are long and brown like this. They're very different from the nasturtium seed, aren't they? Look at the difference there. Really different. Okay, this one I love, the clematis. Get it in focus for you. Remember, this was that big, tall, bushy one that grew up the trellis. Here's the flower. And then it, the flower, again, turns into the seed. Do you see how that used to be the flower? And then you can see the beginning of the little puffy seed ball. Then it turns, it opens up and turns to this. The seeds are still attached to that middle part. Can you see in there? Yeah, and then 
it eventually turns to the puff ball. Look at that. You can see, watch this. Ooh, look at the seeds in there. That floats on the wind. Here's what they look like too when they're really dry. You can see the seed on the end of like a little feather. That seed looks very different as well. Then our hollyhock, I think this will be our last one. Remember it was this beautiful pink flower and we can look at the stamen, that's the stamen. Look at there's a five pointed star in there. And so what happens with this, this is the flower. It's already been, it's already bloomed and it's starting to die. You can see it wilting, but look, the important part is here on the bottom. Do you see this? Let's see, sorry I'm not focusing very well. Oh, I see a bug. Okay, do you see this part on the bottom? Right here? That eventually turns into this. Can you see how that would be? Those, the flower used to be there, it drops off, and then the seeds are forming in there. So eventually, there's that flower that drops off dead. So that was this, turns to this, turns to this, and then, remember this? This is the same as this, but it's dry. We open it up, remember what's inside? Oh my gosh, look at all those seeds. Then those plant for next year. Look at that seed, and let's compare it over here. So here's our different seeds we got today. Do you remember what they were? Let's look at them real close, so we can get a close-up. Okay, that big round, this is the nasturtium, hollyhock, clematis, and cosmo. That's another cosmo. Look how different those seeds are.